Hello and welcome to BIA Kelsey's first installment of a video series in which we uh, go through presentations of the top trends and companies that we are looking at. So today what we're going to go over is Yelp. Um, Yelp being a long-standing stalwart in the local search and discovery space and now making lots of interesting moves um, into mobile and into different content formats and we often get questions about you know what are the best practices behind what Yelp has done so far and where it's going so we put that together into um, in about a half an hour of analysis and slides um, so let's get right into it so first what we'll do is uh, an overview um, and then you'll see some of the chapters here in this agenda we'll go through these one by one um, to, so to start off in an overview, a, a logical place to start is the snapshot of where Yelp is now and its, its metrics. So right now Yelp has about 86 uh, million monthly uniques um, growing pretty quickly. Interestingly, 28% of those are actually coming from mobile. Um, about two years ago that was only about 10%. So you can see that that's quickly moving and we'll get into in, in just a bit um, really what that entails. Um, totally. Uh, in total, excuse me, uh, 36 million reviews, um, and that's a cumulative total, um, and up about 45 percent from where that cumulative total stood last year. Um, and, and this review volume is very much one of Yelp's differentiators, and is closely correlated to a lot of the successes it's seeing. Listings-wise, um, I like to look at this as a funnel, and at the top of the funnel, you have 47 million listings globally, and that's all of the uh, basic listings that it gets uh, from you know local listings providers, um, same source that the Yellow Pages gets its um, you know information. So that's the top of the funnel. Drilling down one level, you have the number of um, list of those listings that have been claimed by businesses, and and we're going to get into in a bit the details of what that means by claimed and what they're allowed to do. And that's almost a million businesses have been actively actively claimed, um, and that allows them to do certain things like update their information. And again, we'll get further into that. Now, further down the funnel, um, there are 40,000 paid um, listings among those claimed businesses, which allow you a graduated level of service and features to customize your profile and advertise throughout Yelp and other things that continue to evolve. So it's that paid level that's uh, Yelp's number one source of advertising. Uh, the average pay, um, revenue or average cost you know, paid by one of these businesses with a with an enhanced paid listing is about forty two hundred dollars per year. We'll get into all those details in just a bit. Um, right now, Yelp's top five categories, business categories, account for seventy six percent of its local ad revenue. Uh, those top categories include things like restaurant and, and trade services, um, and some of the usual suspects, which we'll um, we'll dive deeper into in just a bit. Um, but this is interesting because it really kind of signals the need for Yelp to diversify a bit better and get into some of those off categories which as we're going to go over signals an opportunity for any businesses that have strengths um, in content and in categories for some of these other verticals that Yelp hasn't gone deep enough into yet. A uh, big opportunity there to work with um, Yelp and um, piggyback off of some of its success in, in distributing and, and um, aggregating um, these large audiences. Uh, so Yelp's footprint, um, it's, it's currently growing pretty quickly. It's in 53 U.S. markets. It started in San Francisco um, and grown quickly from there. 44 international markets and growing. As we're going to get into, it's um, you know, international growth, it's geographic growth. It closely correlates to a lot of its um, revenue expansion, and we'll go through kind of how it's doing that. Uh, a few bits of financials. Um, 2012 revenue um, of about 137 million. That's growing quickly, up 65% uh, from where it was last year. Uh, net loss is 19.1 million. However, its its loss is actually diminishing if you look at how it's trending over time. Uh, we believe that it's on pace to, in the next year to two years, um, show a, a net um, a net positive um, income. And its adjusted EBITDA is 4.6 million. Right now, it's largest source of um, expense is actually some of its international growth and its uh, sales, its sales force, which makes up the majority of its um, headcount. So um, let's drill down a little bit into that. Revenue growth. Um, th this you know, 2012 figure we just went over, it's about 137.6 million. You can see from here actually a more graphically um, oriented um, reference point of how, how that's growing. It's growing rather quickly. And also interesting here, the breakdown of its revenue sources. 
Um, when we talk about its business model, we'll go into detail here. But briefly for now, um, the, the vast majority of its revenue, you can tell, is from local. And what that is, is the enhanced profiles that I alluded to earlier, those 40,000 um, paid listings. Um, and then that orange section you see there is brand advertising. And that's larger national advertisers that don't necessarily have Yelp profiles, but want to advertise in both display and in search throughout the Yelp network. Yelp's properties in mobile and on the desktop um, are very much looked at as premium ad inventory because there's a great deal of intent involved in the, the use case of Yelp. People there are lower funnel searchers that are um, closer to the point of making decisions about things they want to do. They're in that kind of hunting mode um, where um, you know a lot of national advertisers with localized constituents. Um, think chain restaurants or big box stores, um, any kind of location oriented business but yet one that operates on a national level is, is eligible and very interested in this type of advertising within the Yelp network. And then that third other category um, are some things we'll, we'll get into in a bit but it essentially involves a combination of affiliate revenue from other services that are operating within Yelp such as travel bookings on orbits and open table restaurant reviews and then also Yelp's deals uh, package which we will talk a little bit more about. Um, here are some other kind of KPI growth represented visually. Uh, we went over some of these already. It's cumulative reviews are 36 million. Um, that's growing rather quickly, 45 percent year over year. Unique visitors um, also growing pretty at a pretty healthy clip at 31 percent year over year. And then paying local business accounts, I mentioned a few times, that stands now at about 40,000. Um, that's up 68% year over year. So they're growing quickly on all these measures. Um, so Yelp's advantages. Let's Before we go deeper into some of its business model, it's still we're on this kind of overview section. Let's look at what where Yelp differentiates. So first of all, it overcame a classic challenge in local media, and especially reviews-centric local media, where there's the chicken and egg challenge. Um, there aren't enough reviews or content to attract a great deal of users. Um, and therefore, it's tougher to create that corpus of reviews in the first place when you don't have those users there. It's classic catch-22. Um, and then conversely from that, it's harder to attract advertisers when you don't have either the usage or the content. So um, there are a few different ways that it, it went about kind of overcoming that chicken and egg challenge, which I'll get into in a second. But first I'll say that it's important that to recognize um, that, that where Yelp now currently stands, the fact that um, that barrier is in place, that chicken and egg barrier is in place, is really a barrier to competition. We'll talk later about some of Yelp's threats. Um, you know, Facebook very much starting to get into local. If you triangulate its moves in graph search um, and its nearby functionality in mobile, and, and just yesterday actually, um, this, this presentation is being made in you know, late April, just yesterday, um, uh, Facebook um, has revamped its mobile business um, pages um, where they are a lot more Yelp-like now. There are star reviews. It's a lot more user-friendly. Um, so, so Facebook's a threat here. But I, I still have a lot of faith, and we're still very bullish on Yelp's chances because of its kind of the barriers to competition that exist with the, the building up of that reviews content. Yelp now is very, very much um, far ahead in terms of reviews volume, and then also brand equity and a trusted source for local information. Though Facebook, though Foursquare, though Google have some degree of advantages over Yelp in terms of network effect and in terms of size of their their reach. Um, one big thing that's often underestimated is the the brand equity around around local and the context of um, you know going to Yelp to find trusted reviews. Facebook has not yet planted that flag yet. It's still something that is known for other types of activity and people aren't going there to find restaurants for example. So my point there is big barriers to competition make us feel very um, bullish on, on Yelp, Yelp's continued success. Um, it, it's got a unique model for entering and growing new markets. This gets back to the chicken and egg challenge. You know, how does it do that? Start off in new markets and build up uh, reviews content and then attract users. It has a pretty interesting model for doing that. Um, it started in San Francisco um, and then continues to grow and if you track its growth city by city, it's done that in kind of a kind of nearby puddle hopping type of type of context um, where you know it started in uh, San Francisco and then it moved to LA and Seattle and then made the big jump to the East Coast and went city by city by nearby city utilizing the, 
the proximity, the cross-pollination of individuals between nearby cities to really build up its, its kind of brand equity. Um, and what it will also do is hire what it calls scouts in these new markets that will uh, work with the, the existing business listings that it, that it has as a baseline and, and they will write reviews. Um, and then the next step is to hire a community manager that will organize a monthly newsletter to Yelp subscribers and organize free events for people that want to come and, and, and it really just gets the, the idea of Yelp out there organically and grows in that ma manner. Um, and, then, and then finally what it will do after the scouts, after the community manager, is it will bring in sales resources. Sales, as we will go over, is a major um, kind of leg in, in Yelp's kind of stool um, in terms of where it's placing its chips and its emphasis on that hand-holding relationship with that paying SMBs. Um, something that a lot of other businesses don't really put a lot of um, emphasis on and, and I think that to their detriment, Yelp, Yelp puts a lot of um, stock in that. Um, so another interesting point about its, its geographic expansion, this goes to the chart you see there on the bottom. Very interestingly, Yelp will mature within a given market in a way that advances or accelerates its, its economies of scale, its operational efficiencies and its relationships within that market as it relies on that heavily sales oriented, direct sales oriented culture as I mentioned it will build relationships with uh, different businesses and that tends to increase the upsell opportunities, the retention and other things that boost that average revenue per, uh, basically it's an ARPA figure, average revenue per, per advertiser. You can see that over time its older markets um, that it's been in for longer have higher ARPAs and then also growth in other kind of KPIs such as cumulative reviews and other things. So what this really all tells me is that its um, desire and its imperative to go into new markets um, is strengthened by the fact that time within those markets um, will see benefits and pay dividends over time rather than trailing off um, which is a key point in its um, kind of um, in, in extrapolating the, the growth and the headroom that Yelp has ahead of it in, in many different markets. And then also unique mix of product focus um, and direct SMB uh, sales. I mentioned its emphasis on sales. There, there's only one other kind of entity out there that, that also has that, which is some of the direct sales resources of you know Yodel and Reach Local and some other local media resellers. And then also the Yellow Pages industry. Now at the other end of the spectrum you have a lot of companies that are uh, smaller, nimbler, product focused, engineering driven, um, always iterating in terms of product um, and, and frankly seeing a lot more success on the product side. In that bucket I put companies like Foursquare and Google and others. Now the reason I bring all this up is that Yelp actually possesses a unique combination of those two ends of the spectrum. It is nimble, it is engineering focused, it is very um, product focused yet it also has the direct sales that is a key um, success factor in local. Um, and, and that's really behind some of the metrics I showed earlier uh, to break it down. Um, and here's a way to show that graphically. This is certainly not a, a comprehensive view of the local landscape. There are of course many different players out there, some that, that shine in different vertical areas, but this is just a kind of relative um, positioning um, when you look at some of the two ends of that spectrum I mentioned being you know, direct sales, touch oriented, but then also um, kind of nimble engineering and product focused. Um, and I think you know, that, that will continue to be a benefit for Yelp. So now let's get into the business model. Um, so I mentioned those three sources of revenue before. Let's dive a little bit deeper on those. So the first one's local business enhanced profiles. That's 40,000 um, as I mentioned. Um, the average spend there is about $4,200 per year. Um, now, brand advertisers, I also mentioned those already, so I won't go belabor that point again. Um, it's search and display ad. It's sold on a CPM basis, and it's for those larger advertisers that want to advertise within that premium Yelp um, use case of kind of high intent driven local uh, behavior. And then the ones we didn't go over as much, but I mentioned the other category, um, and you can see the breakdown of revenues there at the bottom. Um, now, that other category involves um, as I alluded to earlier, transaction partners and then deals and gift certificates. The transaction partners are interesting uh, and they're going to continue to grow. Um, that's things that are kind of conducive to the Yelp um, experience where you know, you're looking for restaurants, you're looking for hotels, you're looking for service providers. 
these are you know different partners it's bringing in that specialize in the kind of transact transactional aspects uh, of that um, of that use case. So, for example, open table reservations. It's a no-brainer to be integrated into a Yelp um, context. Um, so, what happens there is that open table uh, will basically look at this as a distribution relationship with Yelp, and as such, there's a revenue share involved in any reservations that are made through a Yelp profile. And the way that plays out from the user perspective is that any restaurant that is within the open table network, if it has a Yelp profile, that will automatically be a kind of reserve a table call to action. With, and that's, that's proven to be a pretty mutually beneficial um, integration by both Yelp, um, open table, and then the user too. Too, frankly, in, in having the ability to book a table when they're in that high intent mode. Um, very similar to that, Orbit, uh, working with Yelp for hotel booking. Same structure, rev share, etc., uh, but in this case for, for hotel rooms. Um, and then the deals and gift certificates. Deals is interesting because Yelp launched this in the kind of great deals explosion of 2010, like many other companies that had kind of a knee jerk reaction. Um, and, and it's been fairly successful just based on, again, Yelp's kind of brand equity and local. But they haven't really done much with it since it first launched. It's kind of a similar economic structure to what's been done with uh, Groupon and others, where it's a an upfront purchase at a deep discount. Um, Yelp handles the payment processing and then remits the business's revenue share to the business for them to then fulfill in in you know the time frame of whatever was stipulated in the deal terms. Um, now there's been a bit of a backlash to that model. Um, in, in shown in kind of the way that the Groupon has kind of performed both in public markets and then also in, in just its operations and then others. There's kind of a backlash to the fact that that is too user centric of a product. The deep discount, yes, people swarm to it, but it's you know not fulfilling the merchant end of things in being the customer acquisition tool that it was kind of built up to be. So there's a lot of backlash, a lot of rejiggering of these models. Um, and we're going to see that continue to happen. I think Yelp will do that here. Right now, this deals product does not make up a large portion of its revenue, but we believe it will evolve, especially as things go more mobile. Mobile will be a big topic we'll talk about in just a bit. But um, I'll put a flag in that that topic of deals as something that will, I think, come to, to play in its mobile initiatives in an evolved form, not that kind of typical um, traditional group buying type of upfront purchase, deep discount model. Uh, gift certificates, I'll mention that briefly. That's just for businesses that don't have the means to create a gift certificate on their own. Yelp will do it for them through their Yelp profile. Users can buy gift certificates and Yelp will take a rev share for their part in kind of, you know, facilitating the transaction, handling the payment processing, and that revenue share will vary based on the, the amount of the gift certificate. And I think the, you know, it's, it's anything from five to $500. Um, you can buy the gift certificate through Yelp. Um, and uh, and then redeem it um, at the business in question. So that that's pretty straightforward. Um, so let's drill down on the free versus paid. You know, the, again, this is the forty thousand businesses. That's the paid side. Um, you know, what does that entail? So first, let's talk about the free um, package, and that's the one million um, businesses that that have been claimed um, that that people can kind of play with. Um, so what that entails is the, the free version, the one million, um, a customization and ability to update your Yelp page. So that lets you update address information and first what you have to do is claim that um, and verify that you are indeed the proprietor, proprietor of that business and that's done through a mail or telephone process. Um, after that's done you can customize information. You can do this for as many locations as you have and you want to verify. Um, and then you can respond to customer reviews. You can do that right within your public page or privately. Um, very interesting because this is um, you know, a, a level of service that was previously re reserved at, at paid models. Yelp is increasingly opening the floodgates for more free um, features. And I think the reason there is that they really want to get users further down that funnel, to use the metaphor I used earlier, um, and, and kind of bring them in um, you know, one step closer to paid, and, and as they do this, they're starting to see the benefits of some of these free thing, free features, and then um, correspondingly, um, some of the things that can be achieved when they upgrade to a paid membership. Um, for example, one of the free offerings is a, a business trends and performance um, analytics dashboard, 
Um, and and it's, it's a pretty powerful dashboard for something that's free to basically be able to see what users are checking in near your business or who's calling your business from a Yelp profile, who's generating maps. Lots of really powerful information. Um, and it, increasingly, Yelp through this is teasing out some of the things that can be achieved um, if you upgrade to a, to a paid um, a paid listing, a premium listing. Um, for example, one of those is a, a revenue estimator tool, and I'll give the details on that in a minute. But it's a pretty powerful tool to start to kind of tease out the ROI uh, from working with Yelp. So uh, moving on to paid, um, what does that get you? Um, that gets you sponsored search ads on other pages, so your competitors' pages, any other kind of profile pages throughout Yelp where it's contextually relevant, and that's kind of driven or governed by a, a, a a relevance algorithm that Yelp has that's part of its secret sauce, um, or within search uh, results. Your business's um, kind of sponsored ad will show up as part of this paid package. Interestingly, also, as part of the premium listing, you are able to get rid of the ads from others that show up on your page. And that's pretty powerful for some businesses that want to really own that uh, presence and, and not have it be um, encumbered by the ads of their competitors. Uh, so that alone for a lot of people is worth upgrading and it's proven to be a kind of good driver uh, of some of this paid revenue. Um, as, as a paid um, premium uh, listing holder, one can also choose the lead reviews. So the reviews that are basically the, the one, the first one you see at the top of the page. Yelp is big on not letting businesses write their own reviews. Review fraud continues to be kind of a controversial issue in the world of Yelp. Um, and, and their reviews they see as very much sacred territory, um, something that is very much at the core of their value. Uh, for example, they don't let you yet write reviews in mobile yet uh, because they don't want to sacrifice or compromise the integrity of the long-form reviews that they're accustomed to and that they build a business on. In mobile, there'll be a lot more kind of abbreviated speak and SMS type speak and uh, you know LOL and all you know this kind of thing that, that they want to keep their reviews long form and, and, and qualitatively um, solid. So anyway that, that's just a, a long way of saying that um, the, the reviews content for them is very sacred um, so they don't let businesses tinker with the content of the reviews but they will let you um, modify the positioning of at least one review as, as a paid member. Um, video clips and slide shares, uh, sorry, slideshows. Um, this is big and, I, and will continue to grow. Um, you know, if you pay for a premium uh, profile, you can have video slideshows um, and, and photo slideshows. And that's important for certain types of businesses that are really conducive to visuals. Um, restaurants is a good example. Um, people love to take pictures of food. Um, the ambiance, all of these types of things can make or break a decision about where you go to eat. Um, so Yelp um, business profile holders have really uh, latched onto this as a key asset and a key feature. Now one other point I want to make here before I move on is where we believe Yelp will go with this. Um, there, there's, you know, mobile broadband continues to go down. As we're going to talk about in a bit, 60% of all photos shared on Yelp are done from mobile. So as more and more of its usage trends towards mobile, we're going to see this kind of multimedia aspect to the service really start to grow. Not only from the user perspective, in sharing images um, and taking video and that kind of stuff, but also using those kind of, you know, that user behavior towards monetizable events to kind of integrate with, with this uh, paid package. Um, and, and, you know, we see things like Twitter's Vine, six second videos that are very easy to create, they're low barrier, they're easy to consume, they're easy to share. Um, you know, this type of thing, I believe, is a natural fit for Yelp profile. So look for Yelp to either purchase a competitor to tw um, Twitter's Vine, start to work directly with Twitter's Vine, or perhaps grow something in-house that allows its users to kind of shoot really quick um, montages of six-second videos that really kind of capture in, in a very short format um, the, the essence of a business. Uh, that's going to be a big area of development. A little bit more on um, what can be expected quantitatively from some of those levels of, of uh, Yelp participation that we just went over. So um, Boston Consulting Group, um, an independent research firm, just did a study about a month ago um, showing, you know, among all the different levels of Yelp participation, you know, what you can expect as an ROI. What they found is that from the free claimed listings, um, 
advertisers or sorry businesses saw um, an eight thousand dollar boost in terms of revenue compared with benchmarks of non Yelp advertisers or what they were able to see over time. Um, if you uh, compare that to the enhanced listings, the premium listings, um, it was a revenue boost of boost, excuse me, of twenty three thousand dollars, which is pretty powerful. Both of those kind of levels are, are powerful when you compare them to the average Yelp spend of advertisers again, which is forty two hundred dollars. Um, now this is also interesting. Only fifteen percent of SMBs knew that they had a free Yelp profile, and only eleven percent had claimed it. So that is almost a little bit disparaging in that it shows that some small businesses are not really engaged. They didn't even know they had a profile. However, I see this as more of a positive for Yelp um, in, in telling of the fact that there's a great deal of headroom. You know, we saw how quickly Yelp is growing in some of the earlier metrics. This really shows that they're not reaching levels of uh, maturity in, in revenue growth anytime soon, given that th this headroom still exists in terms of an addressable market of SMBs that still ha have yet to kind of discover some of these strong ROI possibilities of, of working with Yelp. Um, category breakdown, um, you know, among the 23,000, this shows kind of how that breaks down in terms of some of the, the categories that are seeing the most amount of ROI or, or the revenue boost. Uh, some of these make sense because they are higher margin categories, home services, automotive, um, you know, where lead value is much greater um, in terms of, you know, low frequency of transaction but high, high, high margin, um, low volume, high margin plays, in other words. Um, so uh, this is something I alluded to before. Some of the free things they're offering, Yelp is offering, um, that's really kind of enticing businesses to see the ROI um, and therefore upsell. Um, so based on that Boston Consulting Group study I just talked about, Yelp said, okay, that's kind of cool. Why don't we provide a mini version of that to every Yelp claimed profile? And that's exactly what they did. They took the same methodology used by Boston Consulting Group in looking at you know, the, the measurement of different um, you know, trackable actions by users on Yelp, the clicks they're seeing, uh, the calls generated from the profiles, especially in mobile. Uh, those that generated maps and directions and check-ins and all these other activities on Yelp and then they applied a coefficient um, you know based on the value of those leads which was variable per different business category and then came out with this way to extrapolate what businesses are seeing in terms of revenue in terms of revenue lift from from having these uh, or having this presence within Yelp um, so that's something I think we're going to see continue to develop but for now it's a pretty powerful tool uh, for businesses to be able to play with so now let's get into mobile. Um, and you can probably tell from the first two categories, we've taken a long time to, to scrub them. Mobile is also a big one. And then these last three are, are decidedly more quick to get through. So we'll hit our time, uh, time goal here in, in getting this presentation um, executed. So um, let's talk about mobile. Again, a good starting place is a snapshot of where they are now. Yelp uh, mobile apps are used on uh, 9.2 million uh, unique mobile devices per month. Um, that represents 28% of Yelp's overall um, unique visitors. But interestingly, this is a key point, that 28% accounts for a disproportionately high percentage of searches across the Yelp network at 46%. That's very telling to me the level in, of engagement of mobile users and again some of the monetizable events for when Yelp begins to flip that monetization switch. And they've already done that to some degree which we'll get into in just a minute. Um, I mentioned this earlier, I'll say it again, the majority of, of photos, 61% on the site are now coming from mobile. It's available across all major smartphone platforms and the functionality also continues to evolve. Um, it's basic stuff like search and view profiles and reviews, but also reverse, reserve tables uh, like we talked about earlier with OpenTable, uh, buy deals, check in, share photos, lots of other good stuff like that. Monocle is something that is um, kind of before its time, it's an augmented reality interface but as I mentioned earlier, a lot of Yelp's growth will come from multimedia as that is really acclimated among the mobile mainstream as mobile broadband costs go down. Um, Yelp is well positioned to do that and it already has a great augmented reality interface. Um, it's one of the best ones out there actually. Augmented reality in general is I think a low, you know, early adopter phase uh, product but, um, but has a lot of room for growth in general. 
and I think that that's certainly the case with Yelp, and they have one of the best AR interfaces out there. You can kind of hold up the phone and through the viewfinder see all the Yelp restaurants that are around you or businesses altogether, and then also the signature star ratings show up right within that interface. It's pretty cool. If you haven't used it, I would recommend it. It's within the iOS app and some of their other smartphone apps. Uh, moving on, there's a few milestones. Yelp is clearly one of the top apps out there. Um, lots of accolades from different magazines and within the Apple App Store itself. A um, few other kind of factoids. Uh, a lot of these I kind of mentioned, but I'll focus in on one here, um, which is that every second consumers generated directions or called a business from uh, the Yelp mobile app. That's pretty powerful when you think about these are the types of activities that small businesses want to drive. Uh, when you're talking about directions, that's clearly something that's conducive to restaurants and to retail and any businesses that conduct business and, and, and you know, realize revenue um, in, in, in the sense of offline at their location. Um, and then calls are popular among another uh, big category in Yelp, which is services, whether it be professional services like doctors um, and lawyers or home services that come to your house. And a lot of those categories um, reservations are made and businesses done over the phone. So uh, a powerful metric there and that will continue to grow. Um, so let's talk about what Yelp has done so far in mobile. Um, so right now they have sponsored search results. Um, I mentioned this in what they're doing on the desktop in terms of that paid level of service. You can have sponsored search um, throughout searches people are doing on Yelp. This essentially brings that to mobile. So Yelp is not yet um, selling this separately, but they are extending their existing sponsored um, placement program to mobile. We believe that as it kind of gains legs and, and recognition among small businesses, it will be sold separately and, as at a, and at a premium. In addition to that, the only other form of advertising they're doing in mobile is brand advertising. This is a new trial program they're doing directly with intercontinental hotels and Taco Bell. Again, as I said earlier, hotels and restaurants are, are big for Yelp. Where, where these um, advertisers are, are doing uh, display ads and search ads within the, the mobile experience. So this is also somewhat of an extension of what's been done on the desktop. Um, we talked earlier about how one of the Yelp's uh, revenue sources is national advertisers that are advertising within the Yelp atmosphere. This is similar to that. It's happening in mobile. However, it's worth pointing out that these ads are specifically designed for mobile. It's not just taking the same creative and calls to action and just kind of slapping it on a smaller screen. It is intelligently starting campaigns with the mobile use case in mind. Um, so it's, you know, the, the, the actual banners themselves are um, optimized for the size of the screen. And then the calls to action are things such as, you know, redeem a coupon or see the closest um, location for a Taco Bell, things like that. We'll continue to see that develop, and I believe, again, because of the premium ad inventory here, they're going to really kind of not over-monetize the experience by opening up to ad networks that could really just kind of bring in the commoditization of the ad inventory where it's devalued, it's not really contextually relevant. We believe Yelp is premium enough that it can work directly with a lot of advertisers to maintain a certain degree of exclusivity within the experience. Um, and then also the kind of direct advantages, economic advantages of working with advertisers rather than a revenue share with, with ad networks. So look for that to continue to develop. Now going forward, um, that's what it's done so far. Going forward, we believe Yelp's growth in mobile advertising will be more in a native sense. You probably hear that term a lot, native development and product design, native advertising and media. Um, and essentially in the, in the kind of advertising sense, it really means that advertising that um, syncs better with the content that's around it. Um, Facebook is the best ex um, example of that, and that's why I use that here. Uh, Facebook sponsored stories. What it's done is it's allowed advertisers to take existing messaging within Facebook, whether it be that advertiser's Facebook page, whether it be users throughout the Facebook network that are talking about a product. It allows those advertisers to essentially have that messaging, have more permanence and more distribution within the network. So it's organically generated content. Um, the only difference is that it's allowing advertisers to get some more air time out of it. Facebook has actually announced that only 16% of, of posts will show up on a given friend's 
news feed or timeline. And that's really just a matter of the, the edge rank algorithm and, and also just the, the, you know, the time decay of, of posts that will just naturally go down the news feed as, as more will kind of come in on top of it. So sponsored stories essentially lets advertisers boost that 16% to have more of a permanence within the news feed and then also more distribution to friends and friends of friends. And so, so essentially it's, um, the point here is that it's, it's a very organically generated ad unit that melds well with the news feed type of uh, format and, and, and form factor. Um, you can see some of the performance metrics there to the left. Um, these uh, news feed ads, otherwise known as sponsored stories, are showing very high performance metrics in terms of uh, click-through rates and other K KPIs. Um, the way that that is playing out so far in local, that concept in local, we've seen it, and, and here's the kind of precedent that I think is representative of what Yelp might do. That's really the reason I bring this up. What Foursquare has already done here, they have a program called Promoted Updates and Promoted Specials. This is working with a lot of national advertisers such as Gap and Best Buy and Hilton so that they can integrate their messaging in the news feed or, or Foursquare's version of the news feed, which is called the Explore tab. So when users are discovering things around them, relevant message will, messaging will pop up that is basically based on an algorithm that takes into account the types of places that you as a user have checked in in the past or the types of friends that you have and what their levels of interest are. And it brings in all of this great kind of data that Facebook, I'm sorry, Foursquare has been able to accumulate over the years and uses it to basically target this advertising in a very relevant manner. And that comes through with just kind of general messaging from brands that have kind of no nearby locations, but then also promoted specials. So that it basically is a, a version of the same thing, but with a redeemable call to action, such as a coupon or, or something that can be, um, that entices users to go act on um, that type of brand messaging. It's, it's uh, priced on a cost per action basis, uh, based on you know, redeemed coupons, um, and, and continues to develop. So again, the reason I bring this up is that brings that concept of native to local, and the combination of those things, I think, is telling of what we might see Yelp do. And Yelp has a lot of similar assets in place that, that than Foursquare here, in terms of all that data about things that you searched for in the past, restaurants you've reviewed, um, and basically being able to use all that data to suggest, as, as Yelp is very much a discovery engine, suggest uh, certain things that are monetizable events for them. So let's move on now. That's mobile. Let's move on to sales strategy. Again, these last three will go by rather quickly, um, and then we'll, we'll wrap up here. Um, so sales strategy. As I mentioned, sales is very much a, an emphasis for Yelp with the realization that small businesses need their hands held. They need more of a push th than a pull in, in kind of a self-serve um, context, which is what Google, Foursquare, and others have, have re um, relied more on that self-serve. There's an old adage in local media that, Local media is something that is sold rather than bought. Um, and that brings out that kind of push versus pull mentality. And Yelp is very much behind that. And it's very much uh, core to their, uh, their strategy. So Yelp currently has almost 1,400 full-time employees globally. About 75% of those are sales reps. Um, and it's Yelp's largest expense. Their sales offices currently are in San Francisco, Arizona, New York, London, and Hamburg, Germany. And they continue to expand. Um, those sales... Um, Offices will be a combination of premise reps that call on those areas, and those are strategically placed in kind of geographically distributed ways so that they could hit up those major markets. But then also um, part of the sales um, strategy is inside sales um, with you know outbound calling, um, and and there's a focus on really gaining new active local business accounts. Um, that is um, you know one of their main charters. But um, you know, identifying and contacting businesses um, is also um, happening along the lines of you know utilizing the claim businesses that that you know middle part of the funnel, the, the million claim businesses, as really a, a lead generation tool and calling those first um, to be able to um, basically build that business into a paid relationship and increase that ratio of paid to claimed businesses. So essentially, um, to cap that off. What happens is that the um, the premise reps will go after new business. The inside sales reps will utilize the claimed businesses uh, to call on um, some of those. Um, 
And then also there, there's part of their sales force, I should mention, that's um, growing that other portion of their business, which is the national brand advertisers that are looking for that premium inventory within the Yelp network. Uh, future goals. Um, this really kind of caps off of a lot of the things that we've talked about. Um, one thing they want to do is increase the number of reviews because they've seen correlate over time that the number of reviews uh, tracks closely to a lot of their other revenue generation activities and, and KPIs. One way to do that is to increase number of users. Another way is to increase users, sorry, reviews per user. And what they see interestingly is that the multimedia formats I mentioned earlier, photos, other things, especially as things are moving mobile, very much correlate to more reviews per user. So they're going to continue to build features that really kind of boost that review per user ratio. But then also, as I mentioned, number of users will, will be another kind of key factor in growing the review uh, cumulative, cumulative review volume. Um, like I said earlier in terms of their headroom, um, I think this is another area that indicates Yelp's growth potential in the fact that they only now reach about 16% of the internet um, population um, according to Comscore. I think that's telling of where a lot of their growth may lie. Um, they also clearly want to increase paid advertiser ratio, the ratio of enhanced um, premium profiles to those that are claimed. Um, and then to do that, they're using analytics tools like the revenue estimator that I showed um, to very much um, you know, make, a, make a clear ROI case um, to those that are engaged with Yelp or who have raised their hand at least to some degree by claiming their profile um, to really get them to that next level through analytics. Um, and then expanding to new geographic markets, uh, we went over this. It's a, it's a key factor for Yelp because they know that once they enter those markets and that initial investment is made, um, there's a great deal of margin growth that can be expected as they mature within those markets and accelerate their economies of scale and operational advantages and relationships within those markets. Um, and then grow the sales force to do that. Um, it, I think that's, that's very much necessary for them to kind of reach those um, levels of, of accelerated revenue growth uh, by making those upfront investments and their model over time has proven that out. Um, and then platform platform expansion, excuse me. Um, you know, mobile is, is a key area of growth and their users are going there so they want to be able to um, meet users halfway with feature sets that are very conducive to the experience and continue to get users to do more, to contribute more, uh, to take pictures, to work on all those kind of multimedia things I talked about earlier. And then mobile ads is, is a clearly a, a key area of, of growth. I'll, I'll actually save that for the next slide because that's one of their, their main kind of challenges moving forward. Um, and then alternative platforms to increase their usage, uh, both users and you know reviews per user, um, alternative platforms, which they've already started to do. In-car is a big area of development. At the CES conference this year, one of the big areas of growth talked about just in general in the tech world is in auto. It's the next kind of frontier. Um, you know, things have kind of plateaued with television, smart TVs, and other things. And there's really not a lot of acceleration and growth in mobile hardware. So the, the car was very much a central point of things happening. So that's a game that entails partnering with auto manufacturers or aftermarket stereo or navigational vendors. And Yelp is very much doing that to get in the car, which, if you think about it, makes sense because it's conducive to what we call the path to purchase. You might be driving and, and looking for a place to eat or a place to go, and, and that very much is conducive to the Yelp experience. They recognize that, and, and we believe this is going to be a major area of growth. Um, so in-car nav systems, stereos, things like that, and then also smart TVs. We already see this happening um, with the kind of democratization of you know, developing you know, apps for, for television, whether it be set-top boxes like Roku or Xbox or just you know, smart TVs that are increasingly coming out. Um, their development environments where the barrier is lowered um, to basically get on the television as an access point to the consumer by, by using their available SDKs to build apps for the TV. Um, and Yelp has already begun to do that. So, um, oh yeah, let's talk about this too. This is another, before I move on to Yelp's challenges, this is another um, area that I think represents Yelp's kind of objectives going forward. Um, you know, if you look at their distribution of reviewed businesses, so just the businesses, the, the sheer count of those that are reviewed, um, it's a pretty healthy, evenly distributed for, um, uh, construct. But um, if you then look at the number of, of reviews, um, it's, it's heavily weighted towards restaurants and then shopping and then it's very fragmented from there. 
um, you'll very much want to um, have an, a more even distribution, especially if you look at some of the, the category breakdowns we went over earlier, where higher margins could be seen in certain categories where there are higher consideration, um, higher ticket items, like home services, contractors, um, auto, you know, other things like that. Um, so I think that that's a, a great deal of, um, that, that represents an area of growth for Yelp, um, both for reasons of diversification, but also for revenue optimization and margin optimization. So the, the lesson of the story here is anyone out there that has strengths in some of these categories that can help you Yelp get there by, by boosting these content volumes in some of these vertical areas, um, I think that's a big area of opportunity worth um, underscoring. So let's uh, start off by talking about Yelp's challenges and barriers, and I'll be quick here. Um, one major thing that I want to underscore, we talked about mobile. Lots of users are migrating to mobile. Um, it's 46% of the searches they're seeing, even though it's still in 28% of the unique users. Um, now the challenge here is very much similar to one that Facebook faces. As users are migrating to mobile, Yelp's overall average revenue per user actually gets dragged down. The average is dragged down because the, the places where users are going to are not yet monetized or they are not yet monetized um, relative to the places they're migrating from. So with Facebook, with Yelp, with many others, they, they found a kind of revenue um, model um, on the desktop. Um, users are leaving there and going to a place where the revenue model has not been fully baked yet. So in the short term, um, that could see some attrition. Um, they need to walk a fine balance between having the native, having the organic, and having the appropriate levels and quality of advertising in those environments, not be rushed by you know, shareholder pressure. We're talking about newly public companies here. So that's certainly a challenge they're facing right now, is being able to monetize those environments, doing so in a way that's appropriate to the form factor, um, and, and doing so in a way that preserves the revenues they're losing from people siphoning away from the desktop. Big area of development there. Um, Facebook um, is a threat or a challenge to, to Yelp. I mentioned this earlier. Um, Facebook's very much getting into things like graph search, the, their nearby functionality, the newly formed business profile pages in mobile um, in a lot of ways that resemble Yelp's um, uh, pages and also just having the sheer mass to be pretty scary in, in this area. I'm still very bullish on Yelp for a few different reasons, one being the reviews volume, two being their context and their name um, in local and in local reviews as being the trusted go-to place. Facebook is going to have to go through a, a pretty big branding challenge that not a lot of people recognize in order to get people to see it as a go-to place to look for commercial intent and look for restaurants or look for plumbers um, or things like that rather than its current DNA which is more about going to see pictures of my friends or whatnot. Um, so I think that you know everyone is saying Yelp is or sorry Facebook is going to be such a giant in local and I think that could be the case but don't underestimate the challenge in getting there and some of the assets that, that are in place already from companies like Yelp that really need to be caught up with. Reviews volume and then that trusted name which is much easier said than done. Um, and then also just the ability to maintain growth in business categories, as I mentioned, the reviews distribution, and then also the geography. Um, the geographic expansion continues to be an area of investment um, and a challenge for them, you know, to move into new markets where the brand equity is somewhat of a question mark, which is, you know, one of Yelp's major, um, major assets. The fact that it has to continually fight new battles to gain that advantage that it sees in past markets is somewhat of a question mark in terms of its valuation. So something to continue looking out for. And then the reviews volume as well. Um, you know, it must always be kept current um, and, and, and fresh. You know, you can't, Yelp can't rest its laurels on that 36 million cumulative reviews uh, because, you know, there is a certain shelf life um, to those reviews in terms of their relevance. Um, so it has to always be kept fresh um, and they have to continue growing in that respect. So those represent Yelp's challenges. Um, lots of meat there, a lot of stuff we went over. Um, if you have questions on any of the above, um, I'm available to drill down. Um, you can email me at mboland at biakelsey.com. 
I'm happy to engage in this topic anytime. Also look for more of these types of videos to become available. We have so many great topics we're looking at, so many companies we're looking at. The next installation of this format will likely be a drill down on Facebook. Um, I, I alluded to Facebook a few times already, but we'll do a special deep dive on Facebook and what it's doing, especially as things move mobile. So we hope you enjoyed um, this presentation of Yelp. We hope it was um, informative. Again, please uh, reach out to me if you have any questions, and thanks for listening.